All right, good morning. And I'm here with the latest iteration of the Thopter Bridge deck that I've been playing with for uh, like over a month now. And uh, this morning, what I'm doing is going back to a version we played like three or four days ago where we're playing Codex Shredder over Mishra's Bauble. And what I've been liking about Codex Shredder is at the beginning of the game, you can target yourself. And if you discard a Sword of the Meek uh, early, uh, it means that you don't need to, like, say, like, War of Invention to find a sword. And if you, like, you can just get a Thopter Foundry then. Also, if you pay one mana for Codex Shredder and hit a Sword of the Meek, you're, you're basically saving yourself mana. And then in the like mid to late game, especially against like some grindy matchups, you can sacrifice the Codex Shredder to, you know, get like a combo piece or like a welding jar, whatever it is you need in the position that you're in. So Codex Shredder is a very strong card, uh, though it's like traditionally, yeah, we're running the five list to go five O list again, Kung Fu. Um, it's usually paired with Lantern of Insight as a kind of control mechanism. And uh, I've put one Lantern in that we can tutor for with our Warriors of Invention or Inventor's Fairs, or just kind of draw naturally. But that's that's not the primary plan here. Uh, the Shredders can also serve as a win condition against some decks that um, we might have trouble with, like uh, against traditional Grixis Whirr. Game one is usually just about decking, and if we just shred them a couple of times, it goes from being like an auto win to an auto loss, or an auto loss to an auto win rather. Uh, Shredder can also hit Faithless Looting, and you know, getting like the flashback is pretty nice. Um, what else is going on here? So uh, I've been playing Tezzeret as kind of a planeswalker, a source of card advantage, alternate win condition. But uh, I think with the Codex Shredders, it's possible that Nahiri is better. Like, uh, Stony Silence, when we don't have Codex Shredders and have baubles, like, you could just pop all the baubles. But you get, like, a lot more cards trapped with the Codex Shredders. Uh, and they're a much powerful, more powerful card. So I just I want to play with, with Nahiri a little bit. Uh, and, of course, Nahiri's ultimate doesn't just find Emrakul. It can also find an artifact. So... If we have two pieces of the Thopter Sword combo uh, with like KCI to go infinite, it can get the third piece. Um, I imagine there's you know other cases where you find other artifacts temporarily, but that seems like the most likely case. And um, I'm also this is kind of a test of the mana base. You see, I'm playing uh, Dark Flick Shores, uh, No Sea Chrome Coast. So, like, right, Nihiri requires red-white, but there's two copies, and she's fairly expensive, and between, like, Mox Opal, Glimmer Void, and Spire of Industry, we have 12 white sources, which I think should be good enough. Um, you know, in the Stony Silence matchups, the Mox Opals aren't going to turn on, but uh, we still have eight sources, and we have, like, this natural red source. And with, like, Faithful Suitings, I think we have a fair ability to, you know, manipulate our mana base. So I think it's going to work fine. Uh, Unworthy Go, of course, has just been an incredible sideboard card for us. I think it's like fantastic against Tron. I feel like the style of deck wasn't able to beat Tron before Unworthy Go existed and before Damping Sphere existed. And I think like Tron is one of the easier matchups at this point. Like we still usually lose game one, but we almost never lose games two or three. So I'm gonna, and you know, as a uh, Kung Fu geek mentioned. You know, we, we kind of brewed this a little bit on stream and then promptly went 5-0 with it. Obviously, like, you always have to be lucky to go 5-0, but I think, I think this deck's doing some great things. Um, my main concern about the build is, like, Mistress Bobble costs zero, which is incredible, and maybe, like, Shredder is too expensive, but I, I want to I give it a, a, bunch, a bunch of attention since it seems powerful. So we'll just jump into a competitive league here. Uh, let's see. So I think this is Thopter Lantern. So what happens when you have 
<laughs> like 10 different variations of Thopter decks. Yeah, good, you got the right one. Okay. How you doing, Geek? You're great, glad to hear it. That's exciting. Uh, I won the die roll, would I like to play first? Yes. You're off until next year. Oh, that's awesome. Like, having all that free time probably feels great. So we'll keep this. We have a Mox and uh, some Swords. So, you know, ideally we'd like to, you know, having a one-mana cost here would have been awesome. But next turn we can cast a Sword of the Meek. And uh, if we draw another blue source, we'll be able to whir for Thopter Foundry. If we don't, we'll probably have to like cast the second sword to turn him opal on and then whir. So it looks like we're playing against hardened scales. Uh, against hardened scales, we've hurt ourselves very slightly. Uh, this version is only playing three Pithing Needles in the main, and, you know, the, the build that I took to the GP had uh, four Pithing Needles in the main. Uh, Pithing Needle is a key card in this matchup. Uh, an early Ravager combined with either Hardened Scales or Ink Moth Nexus, which are both basically effects that double, uh, you know, the, the, the value of the tokens that the Ravager is making can uh, both run you over pretty fast. Um, but, you know, we haven't seen a Ravager yet or either of the cards that are problematic with it, so the draw isn't likely to be that fast. Um, active Thopter Foundry can buy a considerable amount of time in this matchup. Uh, eventually they start going pretty exponential due to their um, everything getting multiplied by two, but um, you can usually assemble a bridge and either a Witchbane Orb so you can't be targeted, or a Pithy Needle on Walking Ballista, which is their only way to deal non-combat damage uh, before they like get all the way through. Uh, Plank Spell Skype Main, I think, is really strong in this format, even though in theory we like the idea of Actually, so I have these three opals. Uh, I could spend it for blue, play another one, spend it for blue, play another one, spend it for blue, and were for uh, either bridge or um, Thopter Foundry. Let's, let's see, that's pretty resource intensive, but I, I don't think these opals are going to do anything better, so. Let's do that. I guess we can't get bridge, we won't have enough, so it has to be for Thopter Foundry, which seems fine. Uh, and that way, you know, we'll be able to use all this mana next turn to start making Thopters. And I think with Thopter Foundry, you always want to be thinking about, you know, if you sequence your cards in whatever order, like what maximizes the number of Thopters you can make. So one, two, And, you know, I think Opal's a card where, like, you're just not supposed to feel bad about using it as uh, Lotus Blossom. So we're going to be able to make three Thopters a turn. This Ballista is... You know, it's not powered up in any way yet. Like, there's no Steel Overseer, there's no Hardened Scales. So, like, you know, pumping it is pretty inefficient. So it's not, like, going to get out of control anytime soon. So our idea here is that we're going to use Thopters to buy time. Um, you know, gain life, chump lock. Uh, we're definitely not going to attack. And uh, our, our end game is uh, bridge to shut off combat and either pithing needle and walking ballista to uh, shut down damage. 
non-combat damage. Uh, so we don't want to cast either of these swords. Like we just want to use all of our mana to make thopters. Um, this is a pretty lackluster draw on their side. Like they're missing all of their most powerful cards. This is also just like kind of a mediocre draw on our side too. Like not not hitting a bridge, missing a land, not not finding a faithful looting. A faithful looting would be incredible here, right? Getting to pitch both swords. But this is fine. Like this is our draw is definitely better than theirs, and I think our plan is fundamentally good against theirs. So, Geek, what are you going to do with all your time off? Obviously, uh, watch Magic streams as part of it, but uh, any other exciting plans? Or unexciting plans, like, you know, chill, relaxed plans. So this 2-2 two -two Ballista is attacking. Just visiting family. That's nice. Yeah, playing magic. <laughs> So if this Ballista attacks is a 2-2, two, two, we can have a Thopter that's a 2-3. I think they're figuring that out. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't think they have a productive attack here at all. So we can press the good old W key to make the uh, lands tap for the first, first mana available on the list. Huge time savings since basically every land in our deck makes multiple colors of mana. I remember reading an article back in the day where like control players were like the secret to winning the control matchup is to only playing your like basic lands first because it it's more time efficient. That blew me away. So we could attack. We're not really gonna like race them effectively. Their hand's so bad, maybe we could race them. Yeah, all right, we'll, we'll put on some pressure. Like, we get to make four Thopters, and our, our life total is ticking upwards. You know, uh, Steel Overseer would be summoning, thick, summoning Sick, which is the thing I'd be the most scared of. I guess a Ravager would be scary. Yeah, I should really think about, it. like, if they play a Ravager, do I have enough blockers to block every single creature they... Played. So I think those two attacks were wrong. I think we need to have at least six blockers. And I basically only left myself four. So I should have only attacked with one Thopter. Because, um, like, right, if they played Ravager and um, Hardened Scales, they could have kind of gone off. And I'm sure they have enough artifacts to you know, move all their counters to whichever guided block. Oh, but we have a spell scout. I guess with the spell scout in play, we're, we're protected from those kinds of Ravager plays. So this is actually fine. If we didn't have a spell scout, attacking would be a mistake. So we have our, our entire collection of Swords of the Meek. Uh, I want to have... I guess I want seven blockers. So I'll attack with just three of these Thopters. See if, so if they don't do anything scary, we can have lethal next turn. But this might be scary. Hardened scales. And a big ballista. Yeah, so the, they're going to have enough ballista shots to kill most of our thopters. In fact, like any Thopter we want to block with here. So we're actually getting to the point where we're urgently needing a bridge or at least a pithing needle for walking ballista. What do you think we... We can't really race because these... Uh, what do you do for work that lets you stream so much during the deck? 
Um, right now I have like an eBay store where I buy and sell electronics. And, you know, it means that I need to spend like the afternoon kind of processing shipping orders, processing and shipping orders. But, uh, you know, the, the, the morning there's enough time before that, that I can do this. Uh, I'm hoping that, you know, over time I can turn this into closer to like a full-time thing. Alright, so do I want to try and kill any of these things? If we pile block on one of these walking ballistas, the other ballista can kill three of the guys. I think we kill the ballista. And I think killing a ballista is super important right now. Uh, them getting two ballista shots per... Overseer activation is really hard to keep up with. Three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, one, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Oh, they can regenerate it. Maybe it's just supposed to chump block it. I was I've I've never had their welding job be relevant. Um Can't imagine attacking here is right. Like, so th this is pretty rough, right? Like, we haven't found any of our deck manipulation. We haven't found a bridge. We haven't found a KCI. We haven't found a second war. So I think I think we're at like way below expectation on draws at this point. But. Um, yeah, I mean, we haven't drawn the Lantern, and the Lantern is the card that, you know, would have been a, a Pithy Needle, so. I mean, is it possible I should have gotten, like, waited a turn and gotten a bridge? It's possible. This is a Ravager, we're just dead. Another Ballista is also pretty bad. Uh, what kind of electronics? Um, mostly computer parts. So like graphics cards, motherboards. What about you? What do you do in life that you're have the uh, holidays off? All right, let's see what we can do here. So these ballistas can do 12 damage, so as long as 5 damage gets through, we die. I guess anyone blocking, uh, any thopter blocking a ballista reduces its reach by 1. Yeah, I think we're just not going to have enough thopters here. Losing four to the welding jar was definitely a mistake. Like, we could have just chump locked and had three more thopters. Yeah, so they're just taking away all of our blockers and they're going to kill us. So, um, yeah. Okay, so we're going to trim this lantern. We don't really care about like trying to control their top decks. It's, it's you know something that we can do, but not a priority. Uh, Which Bane Arb is mostly a bad pithy needle, and let's see, Cloister. Cloister's fine. They can go wide with a bunch of small guys. So having Cloister to pair with the Snaring Bridge is a solid plan. Uh, they're going to be bringing in a bunch of nature's claims, so like Welding Jar is pretty good here. I guess this is often a match. 
IT junk. This is often a match where like I've gone down on threats and just gone for a controlling position. I think maybe I'll trim two shredders here. Like, Shredder go is better the longer the game goes. You have to realistically get to five mana to use it. And... Right, Shredder is an alternate win condition in case they, you know, Pithy Needle our sword. You know, it's not the way we want to win the game, but we will in that game that way if we need to. Yeah, this looks fine. Uh, you know, there's a small argument for keeping a Witchbane Orb in, because if they hit you with an Infect token, they can proliferate it with both uh, Throne of Geth and Animation Module. But I believe Witchbane Orb turns both of those off. I think Throne of Geth targets a player. You choose any number of permanents and or players with counters on them. No, Throne of Geth just chooses. So, yeah. Would I like to play first? I sure would. Alright, so this hand, we're missing the cheap artifacts that I like, but we have Bridge and Whirr. Um, and our, our deck is full of cheap artifacts. Uh, this Glimmer Void is a little bit awkward because we don't have artifacts to kind of keep it alive. But, you know, the worst case here is that we just play the bridge on turn three to protect the Glimmer Void. Which looks like, looks like what's going to happen. And then we can kind of loot away cards that are bad fits. So we'll play the fair, get this bridge in play, and we're not immediately going to have enough permanence to uh, whir for Ball of Cloister, but uh, we could whir for like Pithy Needle here and either place it on like Ink Moth Nexus to stop some like possible combo kills or Steel Overseer. A Steel Overseer is already active, so it's already going to make their guys huge. Okay, them pumping their guys here is actually I think a mistake. Sweet, so Opal's Fantastic here. Play this Glimmer Void. And now we have three and three. So I think I'm going to loot. Uh, don't need another land. Wow, that's really not a great draw. Um, Alright, we don't need KCI here, and we don't need this other Faithless Looting. Maybe I was supposed to whir. I could see now the possibility of just getting killed by this Ink Moth Nexus. I just felt, I guess, a lot of confidence that I'd find an artifact and turn the mocks back on. Alright, so they have the claim. That's a beating. So we could still were for two. 
to turn off Ink Moth Nexus. And then have be able to like work for a bridge after that. Let's see if we drew an untapped land. What's different? Yes, I think we just have to work for a needle on the nexus here. Blue, 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 and one. That pithy needle. Put it on Ink Moth Nexus. Play this. And then next turn we'll have enough permanence to go and get another bridge. We have it at enough life that you know this overseer isn't presenting much of a threat. So do you have any like tournaments coming up over your break? Geek or like stores that you get to play like FNM in? I think tonight I'm going to Card Kingdom to play this deck, which is like a pretty awesome local store. I have like big windows, so it's kind of actually nice in there and like a bar and a decent restaurant. Oh, really? Yeah, man. That place is fantastic. So we have the choice. Oh, man. I'm not used to having looting. I forgot, like, looting away a sword is generally better than casting it. I guess we won't get to do that. I mean, I think what we want here is most certainly bridge, and then we're going to have enough mana to start cracking these inventor's fairs. And we're probably going to try and use the shredder as a win condition. I guess we'll see, like, a large hanging back walker can often mean it's too hard to make enough thopters to get through in a reasonable amount of time. So let's see if they have another nature's claim. Uh, by worrying on the be in combat step, I mean they should have been able to activate their nexus and attack with it. I'm worried about this nexus kind of coming in under our bridge. So let's see. Uh, we can Glimmer Void. We can crack the Inventor's Fair to get something that costs one and then play the other Inventor's Fair. Or we can get something that costs up to two. I mostly want to get a Welding Jar here just so we don't die to Nature's Claim. the glimmer void okay I mean I think we're fine like they can only make this thing hit us for three unless they hit another hardened scales in which case it's four. Oh, oh, we've pithy needle dead never mind yeah I feel like um <laughs> I wish I streamed years ago. Like, I think it was easier to get into streaming back then, and I would have met a lot of cool people. So at this point... Oh, sweet. This Shredder is good, but the Tormund script is capable of stopping it. I don't want to cast it. So we could crack this fair 
and get a needle for her walking ballista, which I think is the next thing we're supposed to do here. You know, I have some th concerns about, you know, if our opponent finds a Throne of Geth, they can start proliferating on us. But uh, they play more copies of Walking Ballista than Throne of Geth. What, uh, what kind of games do you play besides Magic? So we'll shred this guy. Got lucky, hit a nature's claim. It's probably one of their best cards against us. So we'll flash back one of these lootings. We don't need another island. And pitch these. We have a Thopter Foundry. We're going to have to be. Do we have any swords in the graveyard now? So they're probably just going to keep their Tormund's Crypt um, available until we try and use this Thopter Foundry. So I want to set up a sequence where I get to use the Codex Shredder to return like the Inventor's Fair in response to them cracking the Tormund's Crypt. So I think I need to have like a lot of mana up to perform that sequence. Alright, this Ravager is not a problem now that Walking Ballista is off and they can't attack us. We do have to be careful not to wind up with an extra card in our hand at any time. Another Whirr. So we can get KCI here and go infinite. So although that Ravager means that they can just make 20 hangerback walkers. So it would actually take a phenomenal amount of time to actually kill them. So I think I think we just want to get like two shredders and shred them. Like I think there's almost like if we were at a paper game, we could just win right now. But because of how Moto works, I think we can't do that here. PC video games and nerdy board games. You're playing Gloom Gloomhaven. Sweet. Uh, I have a group that plays Gloomhaven. I think we've played through like. I don't know, like 40 or 50 levels. We've unlocked all the characters. And like we're just kind of like tracking down the last bits of story. How's your, what's your Gloomhaven group like? All right, so they have decided to go wide on Thopters, seeing that we have have this card in our hand. And so we're just going to use this here. One, two, three. Two, three, four. Oh, I guess we don't really need to go for four. I was thinking about all of Cloister. I think we just want this Codex Shredder. Yeah. Uh, any tips on Gloomhaven? Um, and it depends on like, what are you, are you having trouble with it or? Like, what kind of tips are you looking for? I feel like, um... The game has a pretty, like, intense requirement as far as, like, planning ahead and... paying attention to... you know, like, how far creatures can move and attack you. Uh, you know, we've, we've got a lot of mileage out of, kind of, like, controlling strategies where... 
you know, we use things like stuns and disarms, especially on turns where we're about to like kick in the door to a new room to protect ourselves. Alright, so... Tony, the looting. Just gonna loot for more. I guess what I'm looking for are like more layers of protection. So I'm looking for like welling jars or spell skites. Yeah, perfect. Discard these, play this Welling Jar. And... Can we end save targets? Sweet. So, yeah, we're just gonna sit back behind our ensnaring bridge and Welling Jars and uh, shred them out. Still looking for more welding jars and spell skites. Oh, to maximize fun, sure. Um, I don't know, we do like a little bit of role playing while we're playing the game. Like, you know, you can clearly. Um, optimize your decision making when doing like the city events or the wilderness events but um you know like kind of like making up identities for your characters is kind of fun and you know i think when we first started the game out we had a uh, mind thief and a uh, scoundrel in the party and you know there are a few people who are like let's be good and the, the mind thief and the scoundrel were just like no no uh, we're going to rob people, we're going to, um, you know, like, not help the people that we find, like, lost in the woods, and, uh, like, it was, we actually found it was super hard to go negative on reputation, like, no matter how hard we tried. So we've gotten right up to with our nature's claims, and the real danger here is them finding some way to um, proliferate us. So there's the claim, we'll redirect with the spell sky. Like they're a lot more likely to have a random creature removal spell, so like the spell sky isn't actually that useful to us. Uh, the welling jars I think are, are the, our more valuable resource. It's a little bit interesting that we haven't seen an animation module yet. Maybe we've just gotten lucky and discarded them. But uh, I certainly expected to have to like crack one of the shredders by now. through three cards a turn, so we kill them in five turns with these two shredders. Having another shredder would have been nice. And it, usually you can, yeah, right, we got a pithy needle. We have to cast it, because otherwise they can attack with all these tiny guys. 
Uh, I'm going to choose animation module. I think they have more copies of that than Throne of Geth. What have we done to maximize fun? So now I think they can't even like proliferate us out. Um you know, like, when we're entering a new room, we don't, uh, we don't read all the instructions, like, right, it's like, when you enter this next part of, you know, the dungeon, read, re read this, um, we have, we've used, like, apps to, like, that only show you the part of the room that you're in, so, like, the next room is a surprise. Like, and I think I think that surprise element you know makes it harder and more interesting. All right, so we have shredded them. What uh, I don't know, have you guys done anything to maximize your fun? So let's see. Char and spell scan are good. We can't cut any of them. Ironworks is usually good enough. I don't think we can cut the ironworks. But we do only have seven minutes left. That's that's usually enough to go off with ironworks. We could cut it. Cut the ironworks and like one shredder and play grids. Grids are pretty fast and sometimes are good against them. Sure, let's do that. We need the last shredder. Sure. Could come in handy. Learn the game. Yeah, we had to like go back and look at the rules for Gloomhaven a lot. Like, you know, we played it and then looked at the rules and we're like, ah, we got these five things wrong. And then we played it and looked at the rules and we're like, you know, here are a handful more of things that we got wrong. I think I think by the time like we hit like the fifth or sixth game, I think we pretty much had it all down. But it's super fun. Like, I love that game. Do you guys, like, I guess you probably just get to play, like, one level per night. I know when we first started playing, we were so excited about it. We played, like, I think we played, like, three days in a row. We just, like, canceled all of our plans, apologized to all of our partners, and we are just, like, all gloomy. Ooh, sometimes you get into a night. Two a night is sweet. All right, so uh, this hand I'm going to keep. Pithy Needle is an important piece of disruption against them, and this looting can dig it deep. So we'll probably lead on the Needle, and just naming Ravager and kind of in the semi-dark, just because like all their fastest ways of killing us involve a Ravager. And then, you know, we'll, we'll looting and plan from there. If this was an Ink Moth Nexus, Nexus, I would think about naming it instead, since um, it it doubles doubles damage. And if I had a Spell Sky, I would think about not naming it. Walking Ballista, sure. So I'm still gonna use this looting. I wanna decrease my hand size for this ensnaring bridge. And 
How can you discard a sword of the mink? Although, actually here we're looking at next turn casting bridge and the turn after that wanting to dump cards from our hand. So even though discarding sword of the mink is usually card advantage, like card advantage and mana advantage, this is a case where we actually want to maximize the number of cards we're getting rid of. So let me shut off the walking ballista here. Um, my idea is that we're going to get ensnaring bridge, walking the dog. All right, see so when you come back. Walking ballista. All right, so so here we're expecting the bridge is going to cut off combat, and so we don't necessarily need to hit other kinds of creatures with special abilities. Steal the Overseer. Yeah, and you can see here, actually, I think, yeah, I'm going to play the Inventor's Bridge, the Inventor's Fair, and this bridge. The Fair, like the bridge isn't cutting off any attacks yet, but. It's mana efficient to cast it now. All right, so they're not using their overseer to pump. They know that they have to keep their guys small to just get in, get in a few licks. Another bridge. Another bridge is pretty good. Um, like I like, I like the redundancy it offers. And, you know, next turn we're able to, like, play both of these cards and get our hand down to zero. So you can see keeping the sword is just better than keeping a land when we had so many lands. And that's, I think, one of the great things about Faithful Saluting with Bridge is, you know, you can make, you can make your hand work very well for your bridges. Um, so them getting in some infect damage means that we're going to have to worry about their ability to proliferate. And I'm guessing they're going to activate their Overseer here. Cool. So... There we go, we're Hellbent. Uh, I probably could have flashed back the Faithless Looting and pitched the sword, like, gotten more information. But I'll just do that now instead. Actually, so we have, yeah, we'll do that here. Red, blue, blue. Discard both of these, get a welding jar. Uh, so the card that we're going to be looking for now is Bottled Cloister. Like, uh, our win condition is Grid, and Grid isn't an artifact, so we can't, you know, find it by searching. Oh, they're proliferating us, sure. So, actually, I think we need to get a, a Pithy Needle for Animation Module first. As soon as we're stable, we want to find Bottled Cloister to dig us into a grid. Like, it just doubles the number of cards we draw and, like, helps find more, like, lock pieces. just found it naturally, which is pretty great. So 
So now we don't need to worry about casting all the random cards from our hand, which makes our faithless lootings better. Thopter Foundry is going to build up our kind of artifacts. And we can, can we just attack? They don't have any root flyers really. So I guess we'll just make Thopters and start attacking with them. That seems fine. They don't have a hanger back walker, which is kind of the, the main thing that can chew up a ton of time to get around with these thopters. So we can't make like we can just make thopters and attack over a few combat steps. Uh, they do have like two flying creatures, so they're gonna be able to chew through a few of these each turn. I think we can make so many that we're just going to go around that, and I think this is probably going to win in time for us. Uh, there's, a, I guess, a right-click attack with all of these that I should be using. So they can activate their Nexus and their Ink Moth Nexus, but they're just not even doing that. Interesting. What are they looking for? Are they just trying to time us out? Alright, there's the Walker. They don't have a Ravager though, so they can't. And we've already, I think, named Ravager on a needle anyway. So, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's about how I expect that match to go. Uh, online it's kind of frustrating because it takes longer to kill them than it would in paper because otherwise you can just go infinite. How do I feel like Shredder performed in that matchup? I mean, Shredder is good. They game two, we got to use it as a win condition, um, which saved us time. Otherwise, we would have had to make like forty thopters. So yeah, like I don't think Bobble would have been better here in that previous match. So here we have the Shredder. And we're just going to start shredding ourselves. If we hit a sword here, that's going to be really good for the Thopter Foundry. Let's see what we're up against. Uh, maybe like Four Color Shadow. So the Shredder could make their Tarmogoyf bigger. I mean, almost certainly will, but I think, I think we're not supposed to live in fear of that. Like, their, their Tarmogoy is just going to get big no matter what. So we'll just acquire information. And 
And here we could cast Spellskite. I don't think it's really going to be able to block the Tarmogoyf. Pithing Needle doesn't do much. Um, so I think getting the Thopter Foundry out is, is my main plan here. Like, we're always going to have to pay two mana for it. And the Looting and the Shredder both have chances of getting a sword available to it. Uh, we'd still need another artifact to um, sacrifice to trigger a sword if it's in the graveyard. The needle's currently our cheapest one, but with the looting we could hope to hit a zero. You know, we're not under a tremendous clock here, and uh, kind of the hardest thing in this matchup is resolving a foundry. So they don't have any red. We don't know whether they have team or battle rage. Ooh. Let's see, can a bridge help us here? Conceivably. Like, okay, so if we cast Faithless Looting, we might not be able to cast the bridge. If we cast the bridge, they can't use any sorcery speed ways of pumping their Shadows. That sounds pretty good. We should shred ourselves. Here, making the Tarmogoyf bigger could actually be a, ooh, a problem for them. And we already have the Shredder in play. We can sacrifice the Shredder to the Foundry. Okay, so we're playing this in Vendor Sphere no matter what, and our choice is use the Thopter Foundry on the Shredder to get three blockers which is going to be very strong, uh, but we could lose to team or battle rage. Or we could play the spell skite, but we have no idea how big these shadows could get. The last option is play the bridge, but they could have, uh, they could have a counter spell ready for us. So I think we're just supposed to make thopters here. Like, I think, I always think of, like, one blue as just representing ferocious denial, or stubborn denial, with, you know, with ferocious. So we can attack here. We're going to thank our Shredder for its good work. Right, I mean, so that Shredder was basically a cheap Sword of the Meek. Which is like pretty impressive. Like I don't think you can ask much more for than like paying one for Sword of the Meek. Alright, so definitely chump or just I think I'd chump these two big guys. They have no green mana showing. We'll just take three from the Tarmago if that doesn't concern me. Right, the Death Shadows are the ones that can get just kind of arbitrarily huge. Uh, interesting. I think a lot of them don't play like main deck Liliana. So she's probably minus two and get a Street Wraith back to get them like a card and basically pump their Wraiths. Okay, so she, yeah, she minus, and then she's going to get this Wraith. Um, might be worth needling her. Like, she's a draw engine. She's a slow draw engine. But she also can, like, pick off extra Thopters. I guess we could kill her with a Thopter and just expect to make three more Thopters. Still no red source. So there could just be like a three color shadow deck. Right. I'm gonna use this faithless looting. I do want like more land. 
And I think these words are just too expensive. I think I'll, oh, I mean, we can go infinite with a word, so maybe I just want to get rid of Spellskite. If we don't think that they have Battle Rage, we don't really need these Spellskites. Although, they could have like an Assassin's Trophy, so like the first one can be nice. And we'll discard these two. So I'm going to play this Needle. You know, there's a small chance that they'll like Stubborn Denial this, which would be fantastic. Liliana, the last hope. Last hope. Alright. Yeah, I guess the only thing I'm afraid of is Team or Battle Rage at this point. Like, I think that we have enough chump blockers, our life total is quite high, and it's just if a guy winds up with double strike, where I wouldn't feel very good. Um, all right, they also probably have like Abrupt Decay or Assassin's Trophy. So I think I'm actually supposed to make these Thopters before they draw a card. Maybe I'm supposed to do it on my turn. What you don't want to have happen is them destroy the Thopter Foundry while the sword is in the graveyard. And then you don't get to make your full complement of Thopters. Right, and they're, they're doing this precarious thing where their life total is going even lower. So we often... It does not take many Thopters to finish them off. It's just, like, when do we decide to turn the corner and attack? But it's not now. Um, I'm happy to just preserve my life total. So, right, if we try to cast the Ensnaring Bridge, there's a very good chance that they just have a hard counter now. And I think it's much better to just be using our mana to make Thopters. Wow, they did it on themselves. So yeah, they did have the Stubborn Denial. Interesting. <laughs> Turning on their Traverse. What are they getting? Ooze. Alright, this is going to work out very badly for them. So we've been playing around this Stubborn Denial the whole time. And now they are tapped out. And we have... Yes. We have seven permanents, which means that we can work for Kirk Clan Ironworks and go infinite. So we're going to do that. So we're going to sacrifice this Pithy Needle and then just start going off with this Sword of the Meek. We can make as many as we want at instant speed. So I'm just going to make four here. And then ship it to the opponent's turn. I guess, yeah. I mean, they have the ooze. I guess we have to kind of go off before they untap. So I guess I will double our number of Thopters. And actually while we're at it, yeah, we can play out these artifacts too, like the Ensnaring Bridge and the Spell Sky. Okay, it only 
need Damping Sphere against them. We don't really need Witchbane Orb. Like, Bottom Cloister will protect our hand. More of, like, Andros cards as opposed to just protecting our hand. Right, they're not really burning us. Uh, we do want these Welding Jars. They are going to try and destroy our permanence. Uh, they just play the one Planeswalker. I think having, like, two Needles is fine. Uh, did I miss a spell sky? Yeah, it looks like I missed a spell sky. I want, I want all the spell skites. Uh, Lantern of Insight. We're not really trying to like control their hand. Matches go pretty fast. They're just like an aggro control deck. Um, shredding gives us speed. It does put us at risk of like surgical extraction. Here is pretty good in this matchup. They don't have that many attackers, and she can just exile one. We don't usually need Ironworks. We don't have to go infinite. It's just a plus. So I think I'll leave the one needle so we can fetch it if we need to, and bring in the Nihiris as like, I guess they're not really an alternate win condition. We're still on our main win con, but as just like removal for their creatures. I also just like cards like Nihiri against people who are playing Thoughtseize. Increases our chance of finding powerful cards that we want or need. Um, if the sideboarding plan is wrong, probably the most wrong plan part about it is not playing a second Pithy Needle. Like cheap artifacts are quite good, and like they're probably playing an extra, like, a second copy of Lost Hope against us. But, like, Lost Hope is just a draw engine. Uh, you know, if they get to the zombie thing and we don't have a bridge, we probably would we probably lost already anyway. Uh, this hand, I think we're obligated to keep. Like, Spellskate and Welding Jar are good protection for these foundries. And, like, the foundry is half of a good combo. Also, against Thoughtseize decks, I think. I think mulligating is just not usually prudent. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to have to shred them out of this game. I do love that the shredders are an alternate win condition. Like, we don't even have to play suboptimal cards as additional win conditions. I mean, not that like Grid is suboptimal or Tezzer is suboptimal, but like, it's nice that it's built in. Like, there's some matches where you're like, I don't really want to change win conditions, I don't really have a lot of space for these win conditions, and just having a second card like Shredder in your deck that can win is real nice. We'll play this, and then we'll just drop all these welding jars. And Searchable Extraction is pretty good in that, you know, like, it was a one for one. They got rid of a second card in our hand. So we're going to be extraordinarily dependent on the snaring breach of this game. So fortunately, if we find a bridge, we're going to be able to protect it as long as we can resolve it. Right, the nightmare scenario is that they thought Caesar counter it and then have another extraction, or like Snapcaster for extraction. Mm, I probably should run in like Turpro Orb against them to turn off their Snapcasters. And right, it's possible that they have like Reclamation Sage as a traverse target. Or even like Gaddic Teague. I guess they don't have any white, so no Gaddic Teague. I guess you want to bring in Grid against anyone who might bring in Gaddic Teague, because like Gaddic Teague shuts down a lot of our cards. Okay, 
right, so here's the Snapcaster. I guess they're just going to take away our Faithful Sitting, which is a totally acceptable trade from our perspective. Like, we'd rather flash this card back than cast it. We would get card disadvantaged by using it. Alright, so we got a red source. Oh. Alright. Taking away our, our engines. We still have this inventor's fair to get a bridge. It's a very aggressive surgical extraction. Like, I'm not sure if that means that they have another Snapcaster Mage or another Surgical Extraction in hand. Uh, but it's not wrong. Like, Faithless Looting is a very, very powerful magic card, and extracting it even makes sense if that's their last extraction. Like, we're a combo deck and a prison deck, and we're always on the lookout for the right cards and being able to get rid of our excess lands and stuff is very powerful. We would desperately love to cast this Ball of Cloister, like drawing two cards a turn and is exactly what we want to do. I think we probably got a little unlucky drawing it without, you know, a land to go with it. Um, you know, there's a good chance if we cast it, it's going to run afoul of a Stubborn Denial. But they have enough, like, thought uses. And maybe even, like, Liliana of the Veil post-board. I think we're going to try and cast it. Because it, just if it resolves, it's so good. And, like, they have just as much of a chance of drawing cards that blow it out as we do of, like, right, hitting another land so that we can play around their counterspell. Yep. I mean, like, I don't know, maybe waiting another turn is more right, but... Right, they haven't even drawn a quarter of their deck yet, so and I think they often only play like three stubborn denials. So I like our line, even though it didn't pan out. Right, plus if it does pan out, you get an extra card for each turn. And right, if we'd waited, behold, they would have had the death shadow to just turn it into a hard counter. So we'll see if We'll see if our cloister cleared the way for our bridge or whether they're sitting on another Snapcaster. Sweet. So now we have four layers of protection for ensnaring bridge. They're going to have to find a lot of assassins trophies to get through here. Um, so I think the real question now is, you know, can they take out our win conditions? Like, we have these shredders, but if somehow, you know, we lose them to surgical extraction and a counter spell, we could wind up with no way to win. And uh, because the extractions remove cards from our deck, like, we're losing the decking race. But I think if we can resolve even one Shredder, I think we win this game. I don't think they have enough destroy effects. Maybe with Snapcaster Mages they could assemble enough destroy effects. Um, yeah, and here he doesn't accomplish much here. Like, if we draw a Nahiri. She could help us filter through our cards, but she doesn't get us more of the cards that we need. Or she does very slowly, right? She can like uptick three times and then ultimate to get like Shredder. We could have a, a hasty Shredder for a turn. But I think Nihiri is really supposed to shine in the 
um, the matches where they're bringing in like white hateful enchantments, in particular like blue white control. I think the real question is like, is Nihiri better in blue white control enough over Tezzeret that it's better to play Nihiri? The answer might be no. I guess in a matchup like this, if we hadn't found our bridge, like a Nihiri could have started minus twoing to kill guys that could get around the spell skite. Where like Tezzeret might not really be able to stabilize the board in the same way. So like maybe she does have features. I guess another path to victory is uh seems impossible. Like a really big spell skite. They're at four. Could we like just go wide on spell skites, like four spell skites and four swords? No. They're gonna gain life off of the ooze, so that's not a thing. We haven't resolved for too many times, hard to say. Yeah, it's it's true. Like I know she's just a monster against blue white though. Like they rely on all those detention spheres. Alright, so here's our shredder. I'm almost wondering if we now if they have a surgical extraction, they can just surgical at instant speed. Sweet. I think we're good. I think we're getting there. So, right, they can get a lot of life. They're just trying to find six destruction effects before we shred them out at this point. This is, could be, no, they don't have white. Like, if they had white, I'd be afraid of, like, Kataki, just Street Wraith. <laughs> That's brutal. When you're traversing for Street Wraith, you just, like, I have nothing. I don't have a good card against you. So I'm just cycling. Like, I'm using my best tutor to, like, just cycle. Oh, okay. I should save my targets since I'm just going to start shredding them over and over again. Let's get a redundant bridge. They want to counter this, I guess. I like doing for a counter spell. Um, I guess they could also have like Liliana of the Veil in their deck. Like that is a sideboard card that they sometimes have, and hope to plus her enough and give us like a split of cards where we lose our win condition. I guess that's another path where we could lose. Like I don't know if they have Liliana of the Veil. Not every one of these decks does. The fact that it's only three colors though makes it more likely that it does. Just keep jamming the more bridges out here. Right, so there's the stamp caster. I'm guessing it's getting stubborn and denied. So right, they have some sense that they can fight through these. Alright, because they're not... They didn't save that for another Shredder. I guess they know, like, we already have one Shredder, and one Shredder is enough to shred them out. And just... Another Shredder cuts in half the number of draw steps that they get. Alright, I guess it decreases by 50%, because we go from, like, 
two cards to three cards a turn. So instead of like 14 turns, it's nine turns. I'm getting Thopter Foundry is pretty sick. Like, this is actually a match where if they remove Sword of the Meek, it's not that big of a deal because you can sacrifice like random extra artifacts to make Thopters and then the Thopters fly. And you can see like they just have no flyers and their life total is always like piteously low. So like the Thopter Foundry is able to like kind of kill them. Especially if you can get the bottled cloister in play to kind of get twice as many artifacts so you have extra random artifacts laying around. But, um, yeah, like having the Codex Shredder is a huge boon here in terms of, like, alt win conditions. So we can work here, potentially get a second Shredder. We'll obfuscate how much we're tapping for. And, you know, there is an argument for going for extra layers of protection, like getting the Pithy Needle in case they Liliana. Uh, not Foundry, they've already, they exiled all the Foundries with the first Surgical Extraction. They thought seized Foundry and then they followed up with Surgical immediately. Yay. Can't blame them. It's a scary card. Okay, so the Inventor's Fair is now live. So we can crack it to fetch up a pithy needle. I guess we should do it now. Like we don't know if they play Liliana of the Veil, but I think that's the only card I can think of so far that's like in the range of things that we lose to it. Uh, getting another Shredder also seem would be reasonable here to just go to four cards a turn. But I'm just trying to imagine how I lose and trying to avoid getting getting to that spot. And you know, even like naming Liliana here, if they did play Liliana, they might like not sideboard at her in next time. It doesn't happen all the time, but I feel like in some matches I'll play against somebody and like I've had a Tron player just take out all of their Oblivion Stones because I pithy needle the blue stone all the time. I'm sure they're eating up our graveyard. I love them just hanging on it too. But they, they've seen our whole deck. They know that their life total is not in danger, so it's a a resource that they can freely use. So, extra opal. We don't need to be at one card. Like, they probably don't have any bounce effects, so they can't, like, get us by bouncing our spell skites and then bashing. So, I think I'm just going to keep this opal. Because we don't have any faithless lootings to discard it to. I, mean, I think it's. This opal's probably just super dead. Yeah, there's I think literally nothing we can do with it. We can't turn it into Thopter, we can't discard it for a card. Like 
there's no Tezzeret to turn it into a 5-5. Five five. It can literally do nothing for us. Alright, Shredder number three, do you resolve? I have to imagine they have, no? Alright. I mean, I have to say, these Shredders seem pretty swell. Um, you know, Bobble's obviously a very strong card, and maybe the Shredders are better than some other card we're playing, and we should be able to figure out how to get some Bobbles back into the deck. Uh, but because we have so few one drops, like the difference in cost between Shredder and Bobble seems like not the biggest deal. And, you know, the Shredders have been win conditions for us so far. Uh, they've hit early swords for us so far. Like, so far it seems like they've accelerated the clock of the deck and not decelerated it. I want to keep watching that. Like, I feel like my, my intuition is that. Shredder costs more than Bobble, and Bobble dig should dig us through our deck faster, but maybe Shredder just finds the right cards, and that's more useful than just cycling one card, and that the cost difference between zero and one isn't too bad because our one slot is like pretty empty, and we just have like needles and lootings, and you know, like there's usually room for like. 12 to 15 one drops before you start having like enough that you can't consistently cast them on like turns like one and then jamming another one in, a, in on turn three or four. And that, like, that serves as a win condition. I mean, now both of the matches we played, like, we used it to mill out our opponent. Against Affinity, it was only for time reasons, but against this uh, IPAs for days' is, uh, four color shadow deck, I think we would have lost game two if we were on a bobble build. Okay. So here we go again. Uh, Foundry plus Spellskite, so we have the combo. And Snaring Bridge. You know, we, we wish this Witchbane Orb wasn't in our hand. And there's some like minor risks of having our second artifact get countered and losing our Glimmer Void. But in general, this hand kind of has what we want. So I think, I think we can't really pass it up. Uh, in the dark, our plan is going to be to like sword on turn two, and then foundry on three. Our opponent is not going to let us do that, though. So against Jund, the scary thing is if they like took away uh, spell scatter sword of the meek, and then we cast the other one on two. And then they have like Assassin's Trophy and we lose our Glimmer Void. It probably won't happen. People really don't like destroying Sword of the Meek. Like just because it, it comes back, it's it's a feel bad to target it. I guess if they Assassin's Trophy the sword, we get another land. Alright, I'm gonna do it. Uh, Spellskite is the slightly more powerful card to play in this position. Like, the ideal draw here is another land so that we can cast Ensnaring Bridge. Uh, I guess we got kind of lucky here. They could have a destroy effect. So, like, there's some argument for playing Spellskite. They didn't have a Thoughtseize effect, but if they play a Liliana. The spell skate's gonna be pretty bad, so there's kind of like there's a line that doesn't work out here either way we play. And they have about equal chances of having like Colgate's command versus having Liliana. So I think we just want to play our more powerful line. Like Thopter Foundry plus Sword together is great. 
and you know if we get if we get blown up we get blown up we have a lot of redundant things to do right, so they have the Liliana and we don't need this witch bane orb in this matchup and obviously the needle is going to be very good against the Liliana <laughs> don't need a lantern of insight either they didn't destroy our Thopter Sword, so that means that they, they don't have a destroy effect right now. So I think we're going to take this moment to pithing into Liliana. Even though our Thopters can kill her. And, like, a scavenging ooze would be super annoying. I think we're just supposed to turn her off to protect our spell skite. Not to mention, like, to protect the rest of the cards in our hand, which we don't really care about the lantern, but we don't want this bridge getting discarded, and we don't have a third land yet. Uh, my next priority is to get the spell skite down so that they can't blow up the Thopter Foundry with an Assassin's Trophy or a Colgan's Command. No, they have it. Alright, uh, so we'll discard the lantern. <laughs> Man, are we lucky. Um, I'm going to cast the spell skite here. Right, they could they could like get a thought seize. But they have more effects that destroy artifacts than thought seize effects. Alright, Blibri Delph. So they're just spinning the wheel. Ooze is pretty good against Thopter Sword. Uh, but, you know, we are capable of finding more needles. So here... The Thopter Bridge is kind of limited by the Ooze. So I think it's important to get this bridge down. I'm going to attack with the Thopter first. I'm just going to attack the player. I'm going to assume that the any destruction effects aren't going to go after the needle. They're going to go after the bridge. And we also have, you know, the spell skite is a layer of protection against that anyway. So I think the Liliana is very well covered in the situation. So they have three cards left in their hand, so I'm guessing they're going to spend most of their mana. So if we played the Thopter Foundry, they'd leave mana up defensively. But by playing the bridge, they're going to figure that's unlikely that we have another Thopter Foundry. And we have a chance, like, if we draw a land to, say, like, play Thopter Foundry. Yeah. Brutality is really not good against us. So they have two green up means our, uh, our Thopter Foundry wouldn't get to make a sword. Uh, there are ways of fighting through an ooze if you have extra artifacts to sacrifice, but we're not in that position, and you need more extra artifacts than they have green mana, and they have two green mana up, so it's not a line available to us at the moment. And if they're eating our extra foundries, we don't care. Uh, having a second ensnaring bridge is pretty great in this matchup. Like, if they have a Maelstrom Pulse, we can just redirect it to the Spell Skite. Um, and they don't usually play more than, like, one copy of Maelstrom Pulse. But otherwise, it's just, you know, redundancy if they hit, like, a run of destruction effects, which is, you know, I think the only way we can lose here. 
The best card they could draw would be Dark Confidant to just double the rate at which they're drawing useful material. Right, I'm going to get this other foundry down. I should have attacked with the Thopter first. Awkward. Um, having two swords can make it easier to play through news, but um, we would need more more mana again than they have green sources. I guess they only have two green sources. So you could like sacrifice a sword, have a trigger, they try and remove that sword, sacrifice the other sword, they try and remove that sword, and then sacrifice, you know, a third artifact, all the swords come back and all of their removed triggers have nothing to hit. Wow, I did it again. I'm sorry, chat. <laughs> I could be at five right now if I were paying close attention. Right, like I'm talking about getting around the scavenging news, but like fundamentally, we don't necessarily need to do that. Okay, so this needle is the dream. We just get to turn off the scavenging ooze and then can go off with our thopters. And, you know, Pithy Needle is just a card where there are a few matches where it does nothing, but the matches where it does something are just incredible. Like, the Instaring Bridge is turning off the, like, combat side of most creatures. And so even though, like, a Pithy Needle isn't a removal spell, that, this deck doesn't care. Uh, what this deck cares about is just the abilities that any given card brings with it. Um, so I think we're going to redirect, and we're just going to pay two life. Like, and every mana can be, we can get a life back with it. Do they have another effect that they've been sandbagging? No, they just want to get some life and some size. Cool. So we'll name Scavenging Ooze. And now we can make just a bunch of Thopters. And then next turn we'll draw a card and can sacrifice the swords off of the thopters that have swords on them. And I guess we'll just be one short on killing them. So it's possible, yeah, we could have waited a turn if they have a Maelstrom Pulse to be a little safer. Okay, so their Bottled Cloister is better at protecting our hand. Uh, basically, if we have the combo, we're going win. We don't need the KCI to be able to go infinite. And, um, you know, KCI is for when you have, like, extra wars, and we're using our wars to kind of fight against their attrition effects instead of trying to go bigger. I don't think we need Lantern against them. I think we do want Pithy Needle against them. They're, they're going to bring in a bunch of destroy effects, so we're interested in these Welling Jars. Uh, the matchup is kind of slow, so we don't need these Opals for speed. And uh, looting on the first turn isn't as exciting as it usually is, because like finding the perfect card, they can just discard it. We still want to, like affect our draws, but we we don't want to spend a lot of resources having the perfect opening hand because they're going to break it up. Uh, these grids are very good against Dark Confidant, and the question in my mind is like, do we want to bring in Nahiri? Like, they do play some big creatures, and exiling them can be nice. Nahiri kind of does the same thing as Faithless Looting, just more expensive. So maybe, maybe we, should, we should bring in, plus we just want to test Nahiri, like that's one of our objectives in today's session. Maybe I don't need two opals, like the second opal is pretty bad in this matchup and I can just have another Faithless Looting. 
I still like the first dimple. This looks good to me. I'll try this out. Alright, so we have a looting. Uh, this hand is awkward, but I think... Wait, what just happened? I clicked the wrong button. Cool. Alright, well, we're keeping this one. Um, I, I like the last one. I would have liked to have kept it. Uh, I think a third land is good. So... I'm guessing they take the war here, because it gets bridge. Uh, they could take needle... Since it, you know, like they see Needle is interacting with our combo, like interacting with their pieces that stop our combo. If they don't take the Needle, I will just turn one the Needle on the Liana. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a solid play on their part. So I could loot in here, but they still potentially have Thought Seizes. So I actually want to wait on it until I've seen more of my hand. And this is right why I'm trimming looting in this matchup, I feel like. You know, I want to draw it late when I'm just sitting on extra lands, not at this juncture. So we can take a risk. We can loot these swords away. And if they play an ooze and we don't find a needle, it could go badly for us. Like we've lost our swords then. I mean we and if they have a surgical extraction, we also lose our swords. But we have other ways to win and um you know, I think we're not doing great on resources because they're stealing them from us. Uh, are we supposed to flash back a looting here? Or to play a spell skite? Spell skite can just get edicted, so I think I just wanna dig. I think I'd really like to find a needle before playing these. Bridge is very good. Shredder. Shredder doesn't really do much for us right now. And three lands is probably enough. It'd be nice to be able to play both spell skites on the same turn, but I think there are plenty of lands we can find. Accidental mulligan against this matchup is pretty brutal, like, just because they're so resource-intensive. Interesting. Chandra. I mean, Chandra seems like a good... good way to move, especially after seeing spell skites. Alright. I can see why they took the Pithy Needle, too, if they knew they had the Chandra. Nihiri matches up, I guess, even worse against Chandra than Tezzeret would. Tezzeret could, like, make a 5-5 and kill Chandra, or... Gets us just, like, a lot more cards that we need. I think this deck, though, they're usually playing things like uh, Tireless Tracker. And I think Nihiri matches up very well against... Wow, Tireless Tracker. She's also going to be good against Olivia. So, I guess we're just shutting off their attack steps, so these creatures aren't as scary. Chandra, Torture Defiance. And then we'll Spell Skite. Now that it's not going to just die out right to Chandra. So 
So Olivia can ping things to death, but requires eight mana to kill the spell sky. It's pretty far off. Alright, Nahiri, it's time to start doing your thing. So the question is, like, do we actually want to keep a spell skite? Spell skite protects us from, like, a destruction effect. We already have one. We do need a way to win the game. I think we want to discard the spell sky. Uh, especially like another land turns on the Inventor's Fair, and then we could just start Thoptering. Olivia is clearly good against Thopters. Right, she makes, but like we're basically trading one of our mana for two of their mana, so that's not bad. And she kills them, so... Oh, she could steal our spell skite. And she turns it in... Okay. Well... It's basically, like, all kinds of bad. This person has a pretty nice sideboard. Yeah, you know, I think, right, we can draw the right tools. We just, like, we're under a lot of pressure at this moment. I think they're supposed to grudge the bridge here and then kill Nihiri. We happen to have a second bridge, so that's not... It's, wow, they went after the needle. I guess this is like Chandra, right? It's just like looking at ultimating, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, like how do we even get out of this? Definitely discard the bridge. I guess we just got the shredder. Yeah, I guess it's gotta be the bridge. So there's a land. And we have to play the shredder. So if they Ultimate, their Chandra. We don't have a Witchbane Orb. So we'd have to figure out how to gain like five life a turn. They're <laughs> turning all their creatures into vampires. Um, oh, and Trophy's just going to kill us out right here. see Assassin's Trophy. So they do also have Liliana of the Veil, at least in their sideboard. Chandra is a really powerful card. I'm not surprised to see it in Jund at this point. Um, all that scene, I'm not sure that I want to change anything. Like, we could play on Mord Ego and Target. We could Planeswalker. 
or like Ancient Grudge. I guess we could play Graft Digger's Cage so that Ancient Grudge can't flash back. Makes the looting's much worse. Kind of want to Witchbane Orb knowing that they could ultimate their Planeswalker and we could potentially get out of it. I guess, yeah, Ironworks doesn't quite do the same thing. Yeah, this seems fine. We'll definitely play first. I'm going to keep this just because I don't want to mulligan against them. This is terrible though. Like just one land. I don't think we could keep this. What if we draw a second land? We still like can't cast anything. So we need to draw like land land. Yeah, we, we just have to mull. on top. It's actually a pretty sweet spot for that foundry because they can't take it. Uh, we won't shred ourselves because we don't want to lose the foundry, but we'll basically get to just rip it off the top of our deck. I don't think we want to mill our opponent since we know that they have Ancient Grudge. We don't want to like give them a free card. Bang. Alright, so if they have an Assassin's Trophy, they just get to light up our foundry. But if we get lucky with the Shredder, we might just be able to make a bunch of swords before they get to do anything. Alright, sword. No. Hmm. See if we can find a, a cheaper one by milling ourselves. No dice. Alright, that's fine. Um, is it better to cast the bridge here or better to cast the sword here? I think we want this bridge. And if they have a destruction effect, like it's also a discard effect. Like, we're just looking at Colgan's command now. So I'd much rather have them try and make us discard the sword and then just be able to get it back by sacrificing the Shredder. I just have a grudge. <sighs> sure. So we would have never gotten any Thopters. They would have just grudged the Foundry in response. Grudge is not a terribly common card amongst these Jun decks. Like, they often have like one copy maximum in their sideboard. This guy's build is, you know, eh, like I think pretty good, pretty hostile towards us. I don't know if it's good in general, but uh, this, is, this is clearly someone who's thought a lot about their their sideboard and is doing like unconventional things. Yeah. So we'll shred ourselves. I guess we don't have any taking out the lootings with shredder is much I guess weaker than like the shredders are worse without the lootings to loot into, or shred into. So maybe in this like high shredder version, it's wrong to cut lootings. Like that's an argument for the looting being better than say like Nihiri. Yeah, that's, I mean, shredder into looting is a it's a combo. It's an important combo for this deck. 
So we could get a bridge or we get Foundry, I think Foundry is what we want here. Like bridge that could just blow up, Foundry. Like it's like proactive. All right, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be great. They're going choose discard a card and destroy an artifact. And in response, Blue, blue, blue. Tap these. We could get a bridge. I think Foundry is just better. So we're going to get Thopter Foundry, not have a card to discard, and sack the jar to regenerate the Foundry. Which is mostly meaningless, but this does make me want to play like Torpor Orb a little bit more than I currently am. And we lost the cage. I guess that's fine. The cage wasn't doing that much for us. I'm gonna make these thopters now. I guess I should shred myself in case I had another sword of the meek. No. Um, I think I think they don't have a surgical extraction. There's several places we have lost his surgical extraction already. Yeah. And by lost, I just mean like lost our our thopper sword combo. And they have a lot of other cards that are good against us, which makes them less likely to have surgical extraction. Certainly, like, it's a card in the range, it's a card that would be good in their deck. So, I don't want to, like, count out the possibility. Um, yeah, it's weird, like, I think making these Thopters, if they have a Maelstrom Pulse, it's very bad for us, but it plays better around them drawing more destruction effects. So even though I feel good about life totals, I still think trying to trade one Thopter for one Elf is fine. Um, you know, I don't want to like lose two Thopters to Lightning Bolt, and we'll get a shot at making a good trade for this Bloodbraid Elf the next turn. Wow. There are four more card types among cards in your graveyard. Create three one two spiders. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad we went with the Thopter Foundry instead of the Bridge, since Ishkana would just. I mean, they have to get to seven mana, but potentially burn us out. I will shred myself. Looking for more swords so I can get bigger, bigger Thopters. Okay, so if I don't play the Thopter Foundry, I can make four Thopters and have seven power on the board. Otherwise, I can only have five power on the board. Five power is enough to stop Ishkana from attacking. And I don't want to, like, have this card get discarded. Having a redundant Foundry seems good for us. And I want to make these Thopters before they draw another card. Like, I kind of always have Surgical Extraction in the back of my mind as, like, a bad thing that could happen to us. And so making the Thopters before they draw another card 
makes it less risky to tap out like we just did. All right, so this Liliana is hiding behind a bunch of reach guys. Seems solid. So we need to find, we need to find like a Pithy Needle or an Ether Grid. Ether Grid plus Thopter Foundry is pretty amazing. Not quite that. Uh, the spell skate is protected from Liliana's edict effect. We don't have enough thopters to go wide. Uh, I do want to. Let's see. I guess I still want to keep making these. I feel like I'm pushing my luck a little bit. I should shred myself by continuing to tap out for swords for thop for thopters, but. Uh, I don't feel like we can afford to play around extraction here. Like, we're in an incredibly tight position. And I think, like, giving up a Thopter every turn would put us too far behind to have a chance in this situation. Alright, so they're just marching this Liliana up to ultimating. Uh, if we got another mana, we could use this Shredder to get a Pithy Needle. So we don't have a ton of time to find that at this point. Getting a second sword would have been really nice, since then we would we could kind of have one on the board while we're sacrificing the other. Uh, we do have enough thopters that if you know if we don't find the right answer to Liliana, Olivia's if we, we could go wide and attack her down. With Olivia, that window is going to close. Six, seven, eight, nine thopters, five flying blockers. So we need to find like a, we need to find the right card right now, or we're gonna be forced into making a kind of ugly attack. Alright, one, two, three, four, five. Olivia's six. Interesting. Um, Olivia can finish off a Thopter. Oh, interesting. If the sword moves, the Thopter will die, so it doesn't really matter that it would join the enemy. I think we just want to kill their creatures here. Five, six, seven, and they'd have one, two, three, four, five, six blocks. So one Thopter would get through if we did this. Maybe we're not supposed to block because we need all these guys to attack Liliana. I think that's where we're at. Our life total is going up for a turn. So I think we just take the... oh no. Huh. Uh, Olivia can only deal one damage, so we can block the Dark Confidant safely. Six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can block... yeah. Yep, I think this is just how it goes. So basically our expectation here is that we're not going to get the land. Like, we can't. Like, we would need exactly Pithy Needle right now. And so we're going to need to attack Liliana, which is going to cost us quite a few of these Thopters. But uh, it's better than having Liliana ultimate on us right now. It'll give us a couple turns to find lands and needles. Uh, obviously, losing a bunch of Thopters here is super suboptimal.
but you know, setting Liliana back three turns is just what we had to do. Oh, we should pay two life to redirect that. We could have put one more damage on her. Mistake. So we'll shred ourselves. We know our opponent's hand is empty, so we don't need to worry about extraction. Uh, at some point we might try to... Yeah, there's another sword. Nice. So do we want two, two threes, or a one, one, and a three, five? I guess we don't have a choice now. Two, two, threes is usually better. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Ishkana's live, they can drain us for four. A turn. They don't do anything else. Ooze is really good right now. Like now our codex shredders can't get our pithy needles. We'll kill the Blood Raid Elf. Our life total is under threat. So we need to draw a Whirr or Pithy Needle here. We have two Needles in the bin and three Whirrs in the bin. Those aren't great odds. Oh, Grid. This is, oh yeah, Grid is exactly what we needed. All right, best possible draw here, I think. We can get rid of the scavenging ooze. All right, we're going to pay life to redirect Olivia's effect here. Or do we pay mana? No, I think we pay life. Like, each mana we spend is worth a whole lot right now. A whole lot being a tactical unit. So we have what, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 artifacts, so we can deal 7 damage. Just kill him, forget the use. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> apparently they know they're dead. Um, I think we didn't have quite enough to just kill him, and the ooze like gains him life, and with the swords, every time you have a Thopter come back, you reset a sword. Um, so I think killing the ooze actually lets your damage, like you deal damage faster if you can't just like kill them outright on the spot. But, you know, I do like, the, you know, thinking about going for the throat all the time. I like to play first, I sure would. Okay, um, this hand is like pretty good. This is this hand is the reason we play Bald Cloister Main. Like ideally, we'll just go two drop. Is like Spell Skite. We'll draw a land. Three drop will be Bridge, and then the four drop. I guess ideally we'd like to whir for Bald Cloister. We might not have enough permanents in play at that point. Depends on whether we draw like a fourth land or. Like a zero CMC artifact. Which I guess the only zero CMC we're playing at this point is Opal. So this could be a hand where like we draw the shredder and can't whir for four. But you know, in principle 
like hands where you're long on cards and want to get a bridge online faster, like Cloister, Cloister will do it. Um, I guess we can't really know what our opponent is yet. All right, so now we know. Our Phoenix deck. Uh, this ensnaring bridge is just going to be like crushing for them. They don't really have main deck answers for it, and you know, obviously, things in the ice are seven eighths. They can't really attack through a bridge, no matter what your hand size is. They could string together some phoenixes at this point. Um, one, two, three, one, two. So I think my plan is going to be to war on their turn, or if they tap out at the end of my turn. Probably for a Sword of the Meek. Um, but maybe actually oh, for a Damping Sphere. Damping Sphere makes things really hard for them. Yeah, that's fine. Like it just needs to be something that costs two and makes their life more difficult. They have like Is It Charms, which they could use to stop us from casting the Thopter Foundry. Like they could cast Is It Charm here and counter this, which is fine. Sure, Logic Knot. Oh, interesting. Logic Knot is pretty unusual. Like, these decks tend not to play that main deck. So maybe this is like a more controlling... And the Field of Ruin maybe tells us that too. This is a more controlling build. Um, kind of the best thing you can do against a controlling deck is Resolve Thopter Foundry. And it's possible they have Spell Pierce here, but... You know, they don't have Is It Charm. I don't think anyone really plays Mana Leak anymore. Like, I think Logic Knot has mostly replaced it. Uh, they tried to pay casting costs, so it's possible they have Ceremonious Rejection, which doesn't really matter against Sword of the Meek. Although, let's see, if they're very controlling, could they have Cryptic Command? Probably not. They probably just have like cheaper counter spells and Snapcasters. So the question is, should we try and war for a sword on the instep or just jam out a sword here? I think we just try and jam out a sword here. Like, even if they counter and bounce, we can replay our Thopter Foundry. And if they just counter it, the Spellscape probably isn't doing a ton in this matchup. Like, game one. They probably don't have, like... I mean, some of them have main deck of braids. Who are you targeting? The Spellscape. This is your thing. They run cryptic. Okay. How many cryptics do you think they have? So we won't make the other Thopter in anticipation of them just bouncing them with Thing. I probably should just let them kill the Spellskite, like sacrificing the Spellskite was just cute. Yeah. Okay, I've seen this variant a couple of times, but that's, right, this is, this is much more of a Blood Moon deck than a Thing in the Ice deck. That said, 
like if they don't find one of their cryptics i think they also play like a couple main deck of braids we should be in great shape there is a main deck of braid so i'll sack the sword once just so we have it equipped They probably play Dispel also. So like, they could be holding up a Dispel for another war. I mean, we'll test that. You know, there's the temptation to try and sneak in the ironworks while their shields are mostly down, but I think like we don't need to go like, infinite against an opponent like this. Oh, we can just do this the easy way instead of having to war. Are we game one? Yeah. They'd be a madman to have dispel. Oh, fair. Uh, I think some people have like one dispel. So you think it probably would have been more reliable to actually were there instead of to foundry. Like spell snare is, I guess, fairly common also. Man, I don't know. I feel like you have to be a. We are game one. I feel like you have to be a madman to be playing like this archetype in general. Like, and by this archetype, I mean control. So we're going to hold up the words to, you know, punish them if they tap out. Uh, Snapcaster. Sure. Are they going to get, what, a braid? For the ensnaring bridge? Like, I don't care what you abrade. Sure. Blue, blue, blue. One, two. For the Thopter Foundry. And then, sure, you can abrade that. You just need a love for blue. That's, I mean, I don't know. I feel like you can love blue, but sometimes it's important to know when it's not well positioned. I, it just seems like modern is such a hard format to play a, a traditional control deck in. Let's see. I think we care about not taking seven damage. I'm really not sure. Like, but seven seems like a lot. A lot. Ral, sure. So I think they're just dead here because we're going to go infinite. All right, they tapped out. Will we have Thopter Foundry and access to KCI? So these Thopters can go beat up Ral, I guess. I guess we're just going to go infinite on the next turn. And I guess we're still getting Pithy Needle Ral. Like, we're just going to be very thorough about messing Ral up. You know, uh, they can, like, chain together a bunch of cryptic commands to make life difficult for us. Which, uh, apologies to, to Ral, our uh, patron of inventing decks, I think. 
Uh, do we need to... Uh, we should probably do this now. Let's see, they could have a cryptic command, but... Uh, disrupting us while there's a sword in the graveyard is actually kind of effective. Right, usually I want to wait as long as possible before committing the time to making swords, but uh, because we're playing an opponent who, you know, if we sacrifice a sword, they could, like, cryptic in response. I guess we could sacrifice the opal and just keep going off. Like, they'd have to have double disruption effects to actually stop us. And then we could still sacrifice the needle to keep going off. But uh, they don't play like Pyroclasm or anything. So, you know, we can make like 14 Thopters or like 15 Thopters. Right? Enough to win with. And... You know, it's not like you're playing a Terminus deck where, like, that time could be lost to a Terminus. All right, the best they can do is just, like, chain a bunch of cryptic commands to make our Thopters do nothing for a while. At this point, like, I don't know, when I first started playing this deck, I was like, I don't want to play this in competitive leagues because... Oh, interesting. I can just hold down the three button and it will auto yes. I don't have to, like, press it in response to the trigger. Sick. Another shortcut to make this process even faster. Um, right, it was like, it takes too long to make Thopters, nail in scoops, it's not practical to like play this deck online. I actually found like a pleasantly large number of people scoop once they see what your combo is. I think this player is the exception rather than the rule. So how are you, Shadow Popo? I appreciated you, uh making calls for decorum on the uh, Lantern forums. When I was like, here's my brew and here's my experience with my brew. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, like the other people in that conversation felt pretty dogmatic. They're like, this is how our deck works. Any deviation from how our deck works is like wrong. And, you know, I get that. There's probably a lot of people who in the main forum propose things that don't seem like good ideas. But, you know, my, my goal was just to come to the Lantern forums and people were like, how does sword work? Yeah, one of them was being like truly rude. I felt like the other one was just like being pointedly interrogating and that's, I think that's super fine, right? Like, they're like, you know, here are these situations where I don't think your deck works, like explain how it works. Um, you know, like, and that's fine. Like, I feel like if you're in a technical setting talking about a technical topic, like, people should be able to ask, like, pointed technical questions. But, uh, you know, no one needs to call you ignorant or anything like that. Like, but I really, like, I think it's their loss, right? Like, I was just furnishing, like, useful information and they could choose whether to make use of it or not. After watching this for a little bit, maybe like yesterday and or like earlier this week and today, what do you think of like swords? Alright, so expectation is that they have a cryptic command here. Um Like, I'm not sure what they think their passive victory is. Unless they're just trying to, like, tax us in time. Oh, uh, sure. Like, 
Let's see, can we do anything about this cryptic command? Yeah. So we're going to go and get a spell sky. Uh, and have them bounce our spell skate back to our hand. Just so that they can't like chain these um, cryptic commands by like returning their snapcaster. And then I'll just sacrifice a thought. I guess I can just cast it. I don't need to I don't need to get fancy here. Swords is fun. I caused a Jehovah's Witness effect. I was like, what is the Jehovah's Witness effect? Like was I just like questioning their core values so they have to get like hostile to protect them? Swords is fun, the question is still whether it's the optimal artifact deck. Yeah. Always the question, like what is optimal? Um I've been really impressed with swords, but, um, you know, chalices and LD are also effective. I think, I think what we really need to do is to, you know, make a list of all the matchups and compare how those matchups play out, out with the different artifact decks to get, like, a sense of, depending on the metagame, like, which, which, like, formulation is the best for each metagame. <laughs> um, cause like, I think between all the prison deck groups, we like, we have an idea of what, like, we each know the set of facts about how our decks perform, like which cards work in which places, and like if we could have like kind of a meeting of the minds between like all the prison decks. Um, I, I guess particularly like the artifact-based prison decks that are like ensnaring bridge prison decks. We could probably figure out, you know, like which which version is best in which meta games. Um, like assuming that we can trust each other's results, or like and, you know, I'm not talking about match wins. You know, like this deck is ten and two in this matchup, but like. Right, like, these cards are good against, like, blue-white control. These cards are good against, you know, this other thing. Okay, so they're just drawing a card because they've seen our... seen our sweet spell skite trick. Yeah, I would planned to, like, avoid coming into that, like, talking about Thopter Bridge in that forum. I was mostly just lurking trying to get information. But like, right at the Brewing Forum was like explicitly talking about Doctor Sword and like people were speculating and I was like, I have all this information. How long have you been on um, the style of deck, Shadow Popo? I know you're playing it in queues and have so far like properly destroyed me every time we played. Although, uh, I I want to run into you with this, like, Shredder version. I feel like I can steal some game ones. Since it just seems like it's about decking. And we both get to, like, lock down each other's win cons with needles. <coughs> Alright. Have they found another cryptic? Like 15, 16, 17. It's possible I should have made like a couple more thopters so that they can't just be like bolt, bolt, live by hair. No, no, bolt, bolt isn't enough. <sighs> Electrolyze would buy them a turn with this number of thopters. Yes, another cryptic. Cryptic is so good. Uh, Witch Bane Orb sadly does not stop Cryptic Command. It, uh, the text is uh, for Cryptic is like tap all creatures your opponents control. So if you're playing like Commander, it will like tap everybody's. This orb. 
doesn't do a ton against them at this point. Though I think it probably signals that like most of their paths to victory are not going to work. Uh, Shadow Popo says, February or March is when I found the deck. Whenever they started posting 35 O's twice a week instead of 5 a day, this deck started popping up. Okay, so the thing in the ice, they could like string together a bunch of cantrips. Oh wow, they do have Anger of the Gods. Alright. So we have to sacrifice all of our Thopters to like bank the mana and then like recast them. Okay. Yeah, they do have two copies of Anger, so it is like a Terminus deck. You can lose the time you spent making Thopters. Place some. Alright, so for future reference, I only need to like sacrifice half of the Thopters. Shadow Popo says, I imagine the shorter version is advantage since game one is all about cards in the library. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, like, prison is such a small portion of the metagame that, you know, playing a build to, like, win the prison mirror is probably wrong, right? I think the last time I looked, it was listed as, like, 0.37% of the metagame. It's just, I, like, my build right now loses against the, like, traditional salt stacks version which i think most people call grixis were and i just hate having matchups that i know are like unwinnable even if they are a tiny portion of the metagame softers at this point and I'm just gonna let the rest of the mana go. Like we went through an electrolyze here. Attack with all creatures. Get them boys. I guess they're softers. They're probably gender neutral. Get them constructs. Okay. Um, so unlike blue-white, this deck isn't super dependent on enchantments, but they do have Blood Moon. They probably search for his Kanta post-board. So like here is probably still solid. Unmored Ego, as usual, will be a rock star. You can take away their cryptics. Uh, interesting. We're not expecting to get Stony Silenced, but I still think we want just as much aggression here as possible. This is going to be interesting, because they don't play that many Planeswalkers, but they play like Jace and Rao. Sometimes they don't play Jace, and I think they always play Jace. So we just have way more cards than we could possibly play. We don't need Damping Sphere. They don't burn us enough for Witchbane Orb. KCI, we're probably just fighting to see whether we have Thopters in play. We don't need to go infinite, though it's nice. Ten cards still. Uh, can probably cut all our Ensnaring Bridges. No, they do have Thing in the Ice. Oof. 
like all these cards are good. Um, let's see, Spellskite, Spellskite's good. So used to people turning off our like regular win condition. Maybe don't need ego. I think I bring in more shatters. Do we just don't need shredder? Shredder's good. I guess we can trim one bridge. I'm about to trim spell skite. Like they have enough burn that they can just kill it, and it's really supposed to be stopping shatters. And cutting all the skites in the witchbane orb is a mistake. Oh, we can trim two opals. And get two spell skites in, or spell skite and an orb. All right, that'll have to be good enough for now. So we went like very threat heavy. We'll have to see how they like sideboard given what they saw game one. If anyone has, let's see, ideas about how they will want to sideboard for game three, should we get there? I'm interested in hearing them. Get this pithy needle in while we can. I'm gonna name Jace. Like, I think they probably have more copies of Jace post board than of Ral. Um, I guess their counter magic is up. I think still we're supposed to jam this out and see if it resolves. Like, that wasn't going to get better later. It's just like the lowest chance that they have a counter spell is right now. So I think we're supposed to kind of play all of our factories when we can. Like, early. Obviously, like, by the time they're holding up Cryptic, it's not as good of an idea. You need to choose your timing better. Likewise, we'll just try and jam a bridge out while we can. So I think they take a Faithless Looting here, like I think cycling us one card represents more than us cycling four cards. Yeah. We draw one of Spell Skate so we can see how good or bad it feels to have a Spell Skate. Cast Shredder first. It's a non-creature spell, so it's possible they have like Is a Charm or Spell Pierce. And we'll cast our creature spell, which should only really get countered by Logic Knot. We have to play our tap land. So the Shredder can already be recurred for a Thopter Foundry if we want. We're definitely on Mill ourselves still. Down to two cards so the click can't attack us. Okay. We should probably shred ourselves before we do anything else. <laughs> Another foundry. Four, five, six. Oh, I see. Um, we were just supposed to loot. They don't have Cryptic up yet, and like an Opal isn't anything special at this moment. Yeah, like we'd rather just have a land, I guess. 
I guess the opal can be sacrificed to trigger a sword, so maybe the opal's better than a land. I probably should cut the opal. But uh, either way, we have two lootings here, so we're just going to cycle a bunch of junk. Three, four, five. Another shredder. Yeah, so I think we're just going to put the shredder and hold up mana to sacrifice a shredder to get uh, a foundry. We probably, like last turn, I think I shredded and I should have just left the mana up. Right now they have mana up for cryptic. I don't really want to spend seven mana and get cryptided. Um, so who am I supposed to shred here? I guess us still. Like, we, we don't have a sword yet. Yeah, we don't even have a sword, so like, we shouldn't waste a bunch of mana setting, setting up foundry. I mean, we have a lot of ways to dig, so we're very likely to set up a sword. So I think I'll just get another shredder. <coughs> we could just try and shred them out. Um, right, like Thopter Sword is just a win condition. Three shredders. It's a ten turn clock. I mean, surely they will find... I mean, they have to find a destroy effect and bounce effect, or like two, two destroy slash bounce effects for this bridge and spell sky. I guess they're on their way. These shredders just seem okay here. Like maybe they're they're so expensive. Maybe they're not good in this matchup. They're good at enabling Thopter Sword early. So maybe they are good. Better on the play probably. Maybe Nahiri is not that good here. Like, I haven't seen... I haven't really seen enchantments yet. Like, I imagine they bring in Blood Moon against us and we just haven't seen it. I guess we need to shred ourselves to find a Pith Needle for Ral. Yeah, I think that's where, I think that's where we're at. Um, their shields are pretty down here, like, maybe they're just sitting on Ceremonious Rejection. <sighs> Still no Needle. We have Time versus Ral. You think it's not supporting Blood Moon? I think you're probably right. Or five, or short like one mana source to like play Thopter Foundry. So we have to wait a turn. Right, I think we're shredding ourselves with the first two, and if we see a needle, we'll go get it. Yeah, just like that. You know, if they have a spell pierce, so be it, or a ceremonious rejection. Right, they could have a shatter. It just doesn't seem like it's going to resolve if we wait a turn.
Yeah, they have to be sitting on, like... I mean, maybe they just have, like, cryptic commands and snapcasters and they don't have a shatter. And that would be... that'd be nice. So it looks like... that looks like cryptic. Does that mean we want to lead on spell sky? So that they, they counter that. Like counter and bounce. Just a spell snare, sure. So then they don't have cryptic up. So we can follow up with this ensnaring bridge. The backup and steering bridge is pretty good. All right. And then we just, I guess we start shredding them at this point. Like we have kind of everything we want in our graveyard at the moment. Like I don't think we need another pithy needle. We could find more faithful slutings, but we've already hit two. We have a sword. I guess we could get access to like Bottled Cloister or Witchbane Orb. But I'm, I'm skeptical of things resolving. Uh, obviously, if they have Snapcaster, we can be giving them more options. But I think since they have a Cryptic already, they kind of have all the options they need. I guess that Abrade is a substantial upgrade in terms of mana efficiency. Grid's a good one. I mean, this has got to like draw a Snapcaster into Cryptic, unless they just don't have anything. And they just have a Cryptic in hand. Draw a card. And maybe I'm supposed to like wait for a turn where I can double spell. That might be better. So if we're draining them for three cards, it's like a seven turn clock. They need to destroy two ensnaring bridges. Should be like totally within their range. Alright, so we'll, we'll look for a good card here. Don't find anything exciting. Depending on what they do with their mana, we can like Shredder to recover Grid. Or like Thopter Foundry. Like we can Shred for threats that are also like kind of stronger answers. Turn target permanent. Okay. They're kind of making a run at us here. One, two, five, six, seven, eight. So we could crack a shredder and double spell next turn. Huh, cute. Uh, that says to me they don't have a ton of resources if they bounce the Vendelian click to cycle our card. Alright, here's the probably be a braid to hit the other bridge. Sure. Ten. 
Okay, so I think we need to get the bridge back or get Thopter Foundry. Getting Thopter Foundry sounds better. It's cheap. It has a lasting effect on the board even after it dies. I'm going to shred myself. Oh, I have a welding jar. Okay. Oh, the thing, you're, you're right, the thing bounced it. They drew a card. Alright, so there's a welding jar. There is our Thopter Foundry. They don't have a counter here. Oh boy. They're probably doing some counting for Logic Knot, though. Like, they're so deep into their deck, they have to have a Logic Knot by now. It seems like they didn't have a Jace, but maybe they just haven't cast it. Snapcaster... For Spell Snare. Yeah. Fair enough. And I think we're just... we're dead. Hmm. Okay. Uh, here it doesn't seem that good. Bridge does. Spell skate seemed really good. We ended up fighting over it a bunch. Grid's just an alternate win condition. They're not really shutting our win condition off. They're not burning us. We don't need this orb at all. 